Hey guys, that's right, that was the Marine Corps Anthem. And from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, but I'm gonna talk about US Marine Corps pistols that are marked US Marine Corps because they're very, very rare and I know almost nothing about them, but I had a local guy who stopped by and said, hey, I have a couple US Marine Corps guns. You should do a video on it. So I guess that qualifies me to be an expert. Not really, I'm not an expert. I'd love to get your comments, but I'm gonna show you some Marine Corps guns uh, that are marked US Marine Corps and they are uh, very rare. Uh, but to do that, we're gonna take a look at some early Colt revolvers. Uh, double action revolvers, not the real early single action, but the early double action revolvers. Before I do that though, I have to do a shout out to all of you U.S. Marines. Semper Fi, uh, because I, I'm not a U.S. Marine, and if you ask anybody, uh, is the U.S. Marine Corps an elite force? Well, if you're in the Marine Corps, you would say absolutely it is a, a elite force. But the other branches of service don't agree that, that much. Uh, so a shout out to all of you who served in the Marines, especially my two nephews, Justin and Jacob. Thank you for your service. Okay, now for why you're watching, you wanna take a look at some guns. I spread them out on the floor here. It's gonna involve a little bit of history of the Marine Corps, but again, that's not my, sp I, I don't know a lot. I don't know a lot about these revolvers, but I feel compelled to show them to you and talk a little bit about the evolution all the way up to, well, actually all the way up to modern times. So let's take a look. So I have an array of pistols here that span of time from 1894 all the way up to the World War I, 1911. And then the one that's not on here is this gun, which is the M45A1. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. But to start off, I just wanna be clear that the point of this video is to say it's very rare to have any gun marked US Marine Corps. And I'm only aware of three variations that were actually marked US Marine Corps. The first one that I have, again, um, one of our viewers brought this in. So uh, this is just a beautiful gun. The finish on it is beautiful, but this is a model 1905 uh, double action Colt. And um, it is marked US Marine Corps on the bottom. Uh, we do know, you know, other revolvers are marked U.S. Army, uh, and some of the U.S. Army guns went to other branches of service, but uh, this is specifically marked U.S. Marine Corps. Now, I'm not suggesting that these are the only guns. We know that other guns went to the U.S. Marine Corps, but not marked as such. Uh, what's interesting about this one, somebody did try to grind that off, which is not, uh, not unusual in that when people were given their service weapons, um, I see on the 1911, they try to scratch out the property of the U.S. Army uh, just because they don't want to get in trouble. I'm not, I don't know that he necessarily stole it, but whoever picked that up uh, felt a need to. Uh, there's definitely some scratches on there that look like he took a file to it, with, which is a shame. We'll also look at the serial number. This is number 798, and I wanted to point out uh, of this model, uh, they only made, uh, well, there's about 900 of these made. You see the beautiful blued finish and the fire blue here and on some of the pins and screws, uh, the top of the trigger, um, and I already mentioned the hammer, and then of course the screw here. Uh, you'll also notice that the US Army ordered uh, special grips. Uh, these are more squared off. Uh, the, uh, the typical Army model, these are Army models, uh, and I'll go back to them, but the Marine Corps ordered, um, these were special orders just for the Marine Corps, so the 1905 and then the 1909. So let's take a look at this one. Again, it's marked US Marine Corps on the bottom. Uh, it has the swivel, which was ordered by the military. And there's the serial number. They made a, a lot more of these. I think it was uh, in the 30,000 range. Um, but I also wanted to, oh well, let's point out the early logo, which is I call the stallion with the surfboard. That's what I call it. I don't think that's a technical, <laughs> that's not what Colt called it. Um, and this one is one that you're more familiar with. It's a stallion in a circle. So there's two different models there. They have similar, very, uh, very nice checkered grips. And uh, the other thing I wanted to point out, and I, I don't wanna point a gun at you. Um, so you'll take a look. This is 38 and this is 45. Now the story behind this, and maybe it's folklore, um, because I read it in a couple of places, but it was certainly a story that got spread around uh, quite a bit. Uh, this gun uh, will start out with um, 1894, 
And it says right here, U.S. Army, 1894. This was a new design. Before this, they had the single action army that most of you are familiar with and was kind of hard to reload because you had to take the cylinder out. And this was a double action army, so it was an improvement. And it had this swing open um, cylinder. So it was an improvement over the single action army, obviously. So a very early gun, and this was the first variation of the double action army. And you see this is 1894. So uh, the Philippines, there was a rebellion in the Philippines. The U.S. Army and the U.S. Marines went to the Philippines, and this revolver was heavily used. Uh, it was also used in Puerto Rico. Uh, I mentioned the Barbary Coast. From the halls of Montezuma was uh, the Marine Corps and the, and the military uh, invaded Mexico, and that was the halls of Montezuma. Uh, that was a battle in Mexico. And then also the shores of Tripoli, that was the Barbary Coast. Uh, the U.S. Marines, part of their job was uh, amphibious landings, and they landed on the Barbary Coast to clear out the pirates. Um, but let's go back to the story of this gun. Uh, this went to the Philippines, and the story is told that uh, the Filipino uh, rebels were hopped up on drugs, uh, probably cocaine, uh, or the coca leaves. Um, and they say that when they would charge, they would shoot them with their sidearm, and they just kept coming. And so the military went back and said, we need something more powerful. Now, let's th think a little bit about the history, um, 1894, and I believe that the battle in the Philippines was 1898. So part of the history was, of course, the U.S. Army was trying out other guns. For example, here's a picture of the Luger. It's, it's called a test Luger because they sent a, a, a number of guns to the U.S. military in 30 caliber. Imagine that. <laughs> How wimpy can you get? They said the caliber was uh, too small. We know they did make a, a couple in 45 caliber to try to get the contract, but the truth is the U.S. Army did not want to be dependent on the Germans for their weapons. So the test Luger was in 30 caliber. The um, European military, for the most part, settled on a 9 millimeter round, and that was strong enough. Uh, but for the U.S. military, the 38 was not strong enough. They kept giving feedback to the quartermaster, the armorers, and finally to Colt and said, we need a, a, a stronger round. So in 1905, they were still, still using the 38 caliber. Finally, uh, Colt said, all oh, right, we hear you loud and clear. And then they came out with the 45 caliber, which is a much more powerful round. You know, the story, I, I don't know, it's a little suspect. I think when you shoot somebody with a 38, depending on where you hit them, <laughs> they're not going to keep coming. But that's just my opinion. I know some pe people get very energized and like to argue about it. But the U.S. Army clearly preferred the 45 caliber. This is uh, one of the shortest contracts uh, ever uh, because these, this is the model 1909. Uh, but by 1911, they came out with the 1911 Colt. And of course, uh, that really took over. From this point on, with the semi-automatic versus, so all the advantages of the semi-automatic, uh, the number of rounds, uh, the operation, and for a lot of other reasons, uh, all of the branches of service wanted to go to the 1911. So the 1909 was a very short-lived contract. This is a, a beautiful gun, uh, 1917, actually made in December of 1917, uh, in time for World War I, and was issued to the U.S. Marine Corps. And I wanted to show it to you because it is not marked U.S. Marine Corps. Like a lot of the guns the U.S. Marine Corps got, it's, this is marked U.S. Army. The Navy also got U.S. Army. And the Air Force also got U.S. Army. Just generally, it was accepted by the U.S. military and then sent to different branches of service. Uh, with collecting German pistols, uh, sometimes it's a lot easier to track. So, for example, Navy guns are marked in Navy. Um, Krigoffs have uh, Luftwaffe proofs. Um, but sometimes you can only tell through serial number. But, uh, but unfortunately, the records are destroyed. In the United States military, most of the records are still available. So from this serial number, I can look it up and see that this went to the U.S. Marine Corps. Okay, so if you're a Colt collector, a 1911 collector, you do have to have books and resources because you do have to look up the serial numbers to see what year they were made and where they went. Uh, we actually go to this website and you can scroll down and see which ones went to the Navy, 
which ones went to the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps ones are very rare. And again, that doesn't mean these are the only guns that went to the Marine Corps. Uh, some, some were transferred back and forth. I know some went to the Air Force and then later were reissued to a different branch of service. But those are uh, interesting things that you can look up and research a little bit. We also have the Clausen book, which is very thick. And then I have this quick resource guide uh, that I use. Actually, uh, one of our viewers sent this to me, so thank you. So right here, uh, this serial number, you see, uh, we'll, we'll go with the first three digits, which is 216. And um, this is the serial range. And this was made in, well, this one we know was made in 1917, and I'll show you how we know that. Uh, down here, you see serial ranges that went to the US Navy, and here, US Marine Corps. So right here, we know that this gun went to the US Marine Corps in beautiful condition in time for World War I. Now, World War I, just a little history about the uh, uh, Marine Corps, Semper Fi, by the way. World War I only had about 30,000 uh, US Marines participate in World War I, as opposed to World War II, uh, which was a half a million Marines were involved in World War II, and we all know about the amphibious landings where the Marine Corps uh, distinguished themselves uh, in invading the, the various islands as stepping stones uh, to Japan. So of these, there was only 30,000 Marines in World War I, uh, and their casualty rate was a lot higher than other branches of service. And I, I think that's mostly because uh, they were all combat soldiers on the front lines, and they, they were assigned a lot of the uh, most dangerous missions. So the legend and the legacy of the uh, U.S. Marine Corps was really built out of World War II. So today it has morphed into more of a rapid deployment force. When, when we have uh, uh, a trouble somewhere in the world, they like to uh, round up the Marines and get them over there and let them kick butt and come back home again. The U.S. Marines are not a good peacekeeping force. They don't do well with that. They tried that in Lebanon. They sent in the Marines uh, to help keep the peace in Lebanon, and we know the result of that. Uh, many of you uh, were alive when this happened, and it was Ronald Reagan that sent in the Marines, and terrorists blew up their quarters, uh, killing a lot of people, and people, ever, the Americans were asking, what, why are the Marines keeping peace in Lebanon? Uh, so if you want to uh, blow things up and bang some heads, you call in the Marines. And uh, so this brings me to a modern U.S. Marine Corps marked pistol. And here it is, the M45 A1. It's a mouthful. Uh, it is made by Colt. These were made for Iraq and Afghanistan. So in the year 2000, uh, they commissioned these. They are marked U.S. Marine Corps. So it was 100 years between 1909, approximately, that guns were marked U.S. Marine Corps, um, all the way up until the year 2000, uh, when they asked for these to be made. A special order uh, 1911 with specific uh, characteristics. You see it's tanned for desert warfare. Uh, you see it has uh, different grips, special grips. It is marked U.S. Marine Corps, and it was built to certain specifications to make them a lot more uh, smooth acting and accurate. Here's Tim from the Mac channel uh, that I highly recommend, and he's shooting a normal 1911 and then a U.S. Marine Corps 1911. Uh, actually, it's a 1945A1. And he shows the difference. The pattern is a lot more tight. And he takes it this far. Just check this out. This just amazed me. This is about seven yards. That was seven rounds fired into the head using the M45 A1. And here's the group I shot with the original 1911. The original 1911 is not a bad shooting handgun. I attribute most of its shootability to the ergonomics. The gun just feels good to me, and it feels good to a lot of shooters. That's why it's such a popular handgun today. So how accurate is the M45A1? Let's find out by seeing if I can split a playing card at seven yards with it. Well, I'd say it's pretty accurate. You know, I don't think I could do that. It has nothing to do with my aim. My eyes are bad. I just don't, I don't think I could see for more than 10 yards away. Um, but great shooting, Tim. Um, so this, this particular pistol uh, was commissioned by the U.S. Marine Corps, marked U.S. Marine Corps, and then decommissioned. First gun in 100 years 
to be marked U.S. Marine Corps. They now are available. I see them on Gunbroker all the time. When they first came out, I think it was back in about 2018, might have been before that, the U.S. Marine Corps decommissioned them, put a little X through it, and decommissioned them, and they were sold on Gunbroker, and they were going for about $1,500. Now I see them at $7,000 and up. Uh, so they are truly collector items, even though they're modern pistols. Okay, I'm now gonna call this section clean up on aisle 12. I, I just presented the guns, uh, the two models marked US Marine Corps and the, the uh, modern uh, US Marine Corps marked. Uh, and now I wanna do a clean up on aisle 12 because I forgot to mention. So here is the, how's that for a good segue? Here is the uh, uh, paper that you can get, the certificate you can get from Colt and you just go to, if you Google Colt archives, they will charge you for such a letter. And it confirms uh, my hometown of Philadelphia. Uh, shipped to the United States Marine Corps, and uh, it was made on December 4th of 1917. Uh, the other thing that I forgot to mention, uh, going back to this gun, uh, and th again, this was the 1909 in 45 caliber, marked U.S. Marine Corps. It came with this holster, um, and I think the gun is ra very rare, but the holster is probably even rarer than the gun. I believe there's some 1911 holsters that are marked U.S. Marine Corps, or somebody at least made them. Uh, some of you will chime in and maybe send me some pictures. Uh, but this is marked U.S. Marine Corps. It is made by Rock Island Arsenal, and it's, it's dated 1909. It also has a military inspector proof. So 1909, Rock, Rock Island. Uh, goes with this model 1909. I hate to even put it in a holster, but for the purpose of this video, I will grant you that pleasure. And there you go. Uh, that's the rig, the way it came in 1909. A very cool U.S. Marine Corps weapon. Hey, thanks for watching. I look forward to your comments. And I want to do a shout out also to Ken, who is not a U.S. Marine Corps person, but he's the one that brought me these pistols to show. Unfortunately, none of them are for sale at this time, but we do have some of the U.S. Army revolvers on our site from time to time. So make sure you like and subscribe to our channel because I have really neat guns coming up. A couple on my floor over here. I can't, don't, don't look. I, I have some more really cool guns I'm going to show you. Uh, so stay tuned.